I'd like to thank you all for coming tonight to the St Pancras Renaissance Hotel on this very exciting occasion, the award of the first Folio Prize. And I'd like to extend my thanks to our shortlisted authors who had us enthralled with their insights on the art of great storytelling. The response and support for the Folio Prize has been exceptional from all quarters. It has stimulated debate and discussion, and I think that's pretty healthy. The Folio Prize is a distinctive award, different from any other in its simplicity and its international scale. An eminent academy of writers and literary critics drawn from around the world assessing by their own exacting standards new fiction that constitutes great writing. How the judges have agreed on one winner earlier this afternoon, I just don't know. We are delighted and honored that seven wonderful writers are here with us tonight. And so now I want to invite up to the stage to receive our applause, the Folio Prize shortlisted authors. First, Anne Carson. And Amity Gage. Jane Gardam. Rachel Kushner. Emir McBride. Sergio De La Pava. George Saunders. And on behalf of Kent Herov, his publisher, Paul Bagley. Um, okay, now, it gives me great pleasure to welcome onto the stage the inaugural Folio Prize Chair of the Judges, Lavinia Greenlaw. I'm sorry I'm not reading from a scroll. Um, over the last seven months, I've read fiction in greater concentration than ever before. What we're looking for is what any reader is looking for the magical synthesis that occurs when the components of fiction fall into place and you forget that you're reading and find yourself inhabiting a world. My fellow judges and I were not looking for novelty, but we were looking for the new, writing with its own laws and its own physics, which places itself in tension with our expectations and which is unsettling and invigorating. These eight books are all those things and more. They operate at extremes of language, scale, arrangement and form in ways that cast light and create depth rather than simply impress or distract us. We were not looking for variety either, but this list could not be more various, long and short, quiet and loud, fantastical and quotidian, concentrated and shattered, turned up and tamped down. I'm very proud to be part of the jury who came up with this list. I'm also proud of and grateful to my fellow jurors, Michael Shabon, Sarah Hall, Namli, and Pankaj Mishra, for talking books with uninhibited conviction and specificity, for listening with equal intent, for being open and gracious and above all such delightful company. And finally, it gives me great pleasure to announce that the winner of the inaugural Folio Prize is George Saunders. Glad I came. Glad I came over. <laughs> uh, I, of course, I, I just want to say how wonderful it is that in this time, 
a new prize has arrived, and with such boldness, and uh, it's very much appreciated, I think, by all writers. I want to say thank you to, so to the Folio Prize, uh, to the judges for doing what I know must have been a, an incredible labor, labor of love. Uh, also, it's such an honor to be on this, this short list. We had the readings, and it was uh, incredible to see the variety and the, the quality, and it kind of renewed my faith in literature, so thank you for that. Um, Alexander Pringle and everybody at Bloomsbury is just unbelievable, kind of a dream of what uh, a publisher should, should be. So thank you so much for making me feel at home all these years. Um, uh, at Curtis Brown, uh, Carolina Sutton and Helen Manners have, uh, every so often I get an email early in the morning in the state saying, we sold something to Belgravia, <laughs> and we're all very happy. So um, thank you. Also in the states, uh, my editor Andy Ward and my uh, uh, Agent Esther Newberg have been just wonderful. And uh, finally, you know, in this life, sometimes you might meet somebody who is a real artistic inspiration and kind of holds you to uh, a high standard artistically and makes you your better self. And if you meet that person, you're very lucky. And you might also meet someone who makes you better personally, who sort of uh, pushes you up into your higher ground as a human being. And then if you're really lucky, you'll meet a third person who is the love of your life. Uh, in my case, those all three were the same person, so I want to thank my wife, Paula, especially for, for everything. <laughs> you know, just real quickly, I, I, um, as I'm nearing my 180th year of life, um, I've noticed something that in, in uh, life is starting to seem simpler to me, and it seems to me that the, the real goal here, uh, all the distractions notwithstanding, is to develop our ability to be more sympathetic to others. You know, to sort of recognize the truth that actually, in spite of what it feels like, we're not separate from one another. Uh, so I'm so happy to be part of this community of readers and writers and editors, uh, because to me, fiction, since the first time I started doing it, was about softening the borders between myself and other people. Uh, taking down my projections of other people through that horrible process of revision, you know, trying to understand my characters better. So I think in a time like ours where so much of the public discourse tells us that we're uh, antagonistic, that we're separate, um, fiction is a, and literature is a wonderful way to remind ourselves that actually that's a lie. We're not separate, we're connected, and we can actually do things uh, within our life to, uh, to become more connected. So I'm very happy tonight, and I thank you very much. So congratulations to George. As I said, thank you all for coming. And I'd invite you now to um, enjoy the party. Thanks very much. <laughs>